Hey Luke here, in this video we're going to talk about three skills that you can practice on the beach flying your kite. So if you're new to kiteboarding and you, you know, this whole thing about flying a kite and trying to make it work with your board and everything is all new to you, then this is just a couple of little exercises that you can learn on the beach and just become more comfortable flying the kite because kite surfing is, you know, a lot of it is in your ability to fly the kite. Add in your board and the tricks and all the rest of it, that's great, but you really need to understand how the kite moves and, and become sort of intuitive with the way that you move it and the way that you need know, feeling the feedback from the kite and just really comfortable flying the kite itself. And so this video is just three little tips that you can practice on the beach just to you know familiarize yourself a little bit more. So the first tip, the first thing you can practice, and this is pretty obvious, but it's just walking with the with the kite so just walking you know from side to side uh, you might find yourself particularly if you are learning down the beach you know if you can't stay up wind then you have to walk all the way back up the beach with your kite and so you really want to just get comfortable being able to walk with your kite now a couple of things uh, a couple of little points for it when you're walking with the kite it's easier to have it sort of you know around about 45 degrees off the off the water to 12 o'clock and because the kite now is on its side, in theory, it loses some of its lift. And so if you were to let go of the bar, the kite would actually drop out of the sky. So when we're walking with one hand, you just have to apply a little bit of sort of upward turning pressure with the one hand that you're holding, which means that whatever direction that you're walking, you want your sort of top hand that's on the top side of the kite hanging onto the bar. And then you can literally just walk along applying a little bit of turning pressure to this and you can just walk along with the kite. Now, if we're gonna do it the other way, exactly the same thing, we bring it over and then a little bit of pressure on that top hand. You can lean against it pretty comfortably and you should be able to walk pretty comfortably. You'll be using your hand on the, um, you know, sort of sheeting in and sheeting out in order to keep the kite flying. Or if it's really powered up, you might need to sheet out. You might even need to depower your kite a little bit so it's comfortable. So you sort of got a comfortable position with your arm, lean against it, and you should be able to walk. I know that sounds really straightforward, but you know, when, when you're learning, there's a lot of thinking going on with the kite. And so when you're trying to enter the water, there might be some other people around and things like that. So this is just really good if you've got a nice clear open beach, just to get out there and practice walking, just walk up and down the beach a little bit, just to really get comfortable. The way that you need to sheathe and twist your wrist, just to really keep that kite sitting around 45 degrees so that you can walk up and down the beach. Okay, so step number two that you can practice on the beach is about backstalling. And so backstalling is when the angle of attack of your kite actually tilts backwards. And what that means is, so it's increasing the angle of attack. And what that means is that it loses its aerodynamic lift as turbulence starts to rush over the top of the canopy because it's it's for you know it's changing so aggressively in the wind that it no longer lifts and now gets pushed back so it increases a lot of drag now when that happens the kite actually falls back into the wind window and you'll, you'll see it just like literally falling down and what when we're taught how to kiteboard you know it's power on power off you know more power less power and so what tends to happen if you're learning is that you start to see the kite falling back. You're thinking, oh, I'm running out of power here. Keep sheeting in, you know, keep trying to get more power. And what that really is doing is making the situation worse. And so when the kite back stalls, what it means is that the, the back lines are too short and you actually need to release the back lines, which allows the kite that's now sitting like this to come back up to a flying sort of angle of attack. And so this will help the kite race back up into the wind window. So the way that you can test that with your own kite is depending on your bar, what you're really doing is you're adding maximum power to your trim. So however you do that, if that's letting all of the trim out on your center lines or on this bar, it's winding all of the back lines in, you're basically maxing out so you've got maximum power. Then you hold the kite sort of at about 45 degrees and sheet all the way in. 
Now, if you have your kite trimmed correctly, nothing will happen and the kite will just sit there like that. However, if you've got your kite oversheeted, and this is why you can practice this in light winds and set it up like that with maximum power, the kite should behave like this and start to fall back. Here we go, fall back in the window and you have to sheet out and let it come forward. So you can see this kite's really good at not stalling, but I'll do it once more. There we go. So you can see then, once it starts to stall, it really moves backwards into the power zone. falls back, falls back, sheet out, and it helps it climb back up. If you didn't sheet out, then it would crash. Now, you don't have to, you know, it might seem like, why would you practice that? But when you're out on the water, sometimes the kite starts falling back, and again, you think, okay, I've got to give it more power, but what you really need to do is sheet out and let it climb. Okay, so that's just tip number two. So you can practice that. Again, you want to do that in light winds. The kite's not going to stall very well in sort of stronger winds. The wind will have to be lighter than you could go right in. So go out when it's nice and light, put it on max power, 45 degrees, sheet all the way in, let the kite stall and just play around with just sheeting out and letting it fly back up. The third tip is, you know, once you've been walking around and, you, and you're comfortable flying the kite, by this point you should be really comfortable just moving the kite over your head gently. And what you can do is actually practice your water starts on the sand. So the way you can do that is just like if you've done a lesson, you'll know that you sort of dive the kite in order to start, you know, to get up onto your feet. I know that, you know, if you talk to a lot of people, they'll probably say you should never fly the kite on the beach. Uh, you definitely shouldn't start practicing your water starts on the beach. And I get that because, you know, the beach, the land is hard and you don't want to go dragging around on it, particularly if there's any obstacles. And so you want to find a nice, clear, open, you know, this is sandy, so it's quite forgiving. No people around, you know, lots of space. Okay, so you've got to use good judgment for this. Don't just get out there and start diving the kite around on rocks or anything like that, because the kite is going to pull you. That's what it's designed to do, to help you get up to your feet and to go. That said, I found this really helpful in my kite surfing. Uh, when I was really just learning, you know, when you're on the water and you try and get to your feet and you fall off and then you try again and then before you know it, you're 200 meters down the beach, you gotta walk all the way back up. I really liked to practice this on the sand. And so that's why I'm recommending that you can give it a go as well. But again, just be safe and make sure you don't, you know, hurt yourself. So the way you do it is sit down and then just like you wanna do a water start, have the kite at around 12 o'clock and you can practice just diving it down and pulling up to your feet. And then keep keeping the kite in the air. So we can do it again. Sit down, get ready, sort of activate your core, dive the kite, and up we go. Now what you can do is basically, you know, you can practice that and over and over and over again, and this will start to get a feel for how much power you need. Start light, so just really gently, just moving the kite through the window so it just sort of pulls you, maybe you don't even get to your feet the first time, and then you can start working a bit harder and harder until you can really feel it. Because that's what it's gonna be like on the water, okay? And you need to know, you know, you're gonna slide, that's basically what it is. You're sort of hopping up and, and moving, moving along. And off you go. So this is again, you can, you know, I mean, the thing is you can do this 50 times on the beach and just really get a feel for that water start before you get out on the water, how much you give a kite. You know, maybe you need to bring it a little bit further over the other side and then bring it down more through the power zone. Right? But this is something that you can practice as long as you've got a nice sandy beach. So look, there's just three things that you can practice on the beach just to improve your kite flying skills so you can get out there, have a bit more confidence. 
know what to do if the kite stalls, know what to do if you end up on the beach, you can walk back up and have a little bit more practice in you know, your water re relaunching or launching uh, your water start. So thanks for watching guys, Luke here. We'll see you in coming videos.